in a struggle offensively like that? Uh, as much as I hate to say this, it goes two ways for me because I know my guys are going to handle business. But at the same time, you want to be out there, especially when I, you know, kind of got going a little bit there early. I definitely, you know, wanted to be there with my team. But like I said, I knew they would handle business. So I, at the same time, you know, it is what it is. When you got that late bucket and then you, like, you're able to, you know, like you're on the ground for an extra second and you just like think in your mind, oh, we got it secured now or what was going through your mind? Because he said it's an extra, like an extra nah, second or two on the ground. I'm going to be honest. I wasn't even thinking about that yet. I didn't really think about that until they started to foul. Really? So, um... I'm gonna be honest, we got so many good moments. I don't even really remember what I was thinking in that moment to be honest. You screamed at you screamed at Keats while he was cutting the net down. Start giving him some respect. Give my man some respect. I'm was, tired of the disrespect, you know. Um I'm just tired of him being disrespected, you know. That man they treat him terribly, you know, or they did at least, you know, now it's flipped a little bit, but um, we needed to continue to flip because that man deserves all the love and respect that he should get. No, your move that you were scoring on left and right that game, does it have a name? Your little, like, back to the basket <laughs> mini sky they give thing? me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's not what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to do something that's wherever they're not. That's where I'm trying to be. <laughs> Were you just down? Were they, were they giving physical enough on you that you could feel it? Like, is it almost? Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's one of those things. I say like it's been kind of the theme for my season. I can either get in my feelings about fouls or just go ahead and go win the game. So that's no, kind of no, where I'm we're saying, at. No, no, I'm saying they they will get so up close to you that you're getting a feel like we're showing the guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we're not gonna speak on that. We're not gonna give all the sauce away. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, how long do you get to enjoy this one before you actually start focusing ahead and what's ahead of the do at the bottom of the floor? What time is it? What time is it? 7.30. Uh, so about 12 to 14 hours. And I wake up and we'll be in the gym in the morning. What you got for Zakiri? A good game. I won't speak on that too much. <laughs> and it really comes to terms with the fact that you're sending NC State to the Final Four for the first time since 1983. Nah, it usually takes like a day to set in. Honestly, with all this stuff, you know, even the, the ACC thing, you know, it just takes a second. It'll be there soon. DJ Nikola Jokic today talked about you know, his league's first first conference with one of you guys playing, watching you play. Do you draw anything from him? And really? He play? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we... He dunks a lot more than me, but I feel like, you know, he also shoots threes way better than me. So, but, um, I feel like as far as, you know, post moves and everything, we have a similar game in a sense. I wouldn't say um, all of our game, but I say specifically as far from a post aspect. DJ, Moe's dunk to make it, cut it to a four-point deficit in the second half. Was that the, the lightning rod for you guys? Because it seemed like everybody's body language changed after that play. You were honestly, I had to rewatch it to tell you what point it turned. Um, I don't think that there was a second where we thought we were going to lose the game. It was, you know, even the energy that coach came in with at halftime, you know, it was completely different from what we expected. Um, <laughs> after he came in like that, there was no way we were about to lose. What, what, what was halftime? Okay. What did he say at halftime? Uh, he just, he was just happy. Right? It was, we were losing the game and we didn't get yelled at. It, it was kind of cool. <laughs> you know? it was like, uh, he was just like, play some good defense. And he's like, y'all playing good defense. Y'all go out there and repeat that again. We're going to win this game. So, Did you guys realize you shot 73% in the second half? I had no idea. I have the stats right here. I haven't even looked at it. <laughs> Describe this journey, what it's been like, you know, to just, I mean, not the best, uh, best of finishes in the regular season. And now you're one of the last four teams playing in the country. Again, like my coach said, um, in March, you have a clean slate. And we just, we've been taking advantage of every single moment. Does it feel like this team has the attitude of you just can't lose? I mean, other teams, you're not playing other teams, they're playing you. It feels like that at this point. We would say, um, still humble about it, but yeah, it's starting to feel that way for sure. Your dad told the story and hit him yesterday when he was at the ball and somebody said, hey, that's DJ's dad. What's this whole thing been like for the family um, during this this run you guys have done? Oh, man, it's been awesome just to be able to do this, you know, and see my mother out there every night after the game, man. It's just... This is what we talked about as a kid growing up. This is what we sat down and we had, you know, every Sunday night we would get, come together as a family and just talk about what we want out of life and we're making it happen. After knocking off Duke, do you feel like you're America's team now? We always felt that way. Um, honestly, we, you know, we let the media label us whatever they want. We just, we just want to win. What do you feel personally? Uh, I don't really have a stance on that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just didn't want it to get dirty before I can wear it tomorrow. <laughs> what turned things around for you guys in that second half after going into halftime, trailing by six, and then your defense seemed to really lock down in that second half? You said it right there, our defense. Um, I think that that's been the game changer for us all year, and um, I don't think that's going to change now. Did you score 27 against them in Raleigh? 
and you came right out and went right to the basket on flip the first couple times down the court. What is it about that matchup you just kind of feel like you owned? Uh, he just doesn't want to foul, so it's it's a little easier to get to the spots when you know when you know that someone you know they depend on him a lot. So we had to go at him. Are you surprised they didn't try to double you at some point? I very I was very surprised by that. Um, that's what I said coming out into the second half. I was like, if you're not going to double team, I'm just going to go at you. NC State's the eleventh program in NCAA history to send both the men's and women's teams to the Final Four in the same year. How proud are you of that program as well? Yeah, I feel like that's that's a crazy history. You know, I'm so proud of those girls, man. We were watching their game in our locker room. We got in trouble for you know turning up when we were supposed to be you know getting ready and everything. So. <laughs> Um, man, all the love to them. Shout out to them. How much did that motivate you guys watching the room and seeing them take that win too? Man, we couldn't we couldn't go out there and let them talk that junk to us about how they got there and we didn't. So um, it, it just it feels good, man. It's amazing. DJ, you 